Well, hello and welcome to NKC Round 6, the final round from Clay Pigeon, and what a difference a month makes. Today, you can see my breath. Only at the last round, I was sweating so much, my pants were soaked. But anyway, back to kart racing. Joe, so many championships have been decided. All the championships have been decided. Uh, one weekend of racing, one day of racing, and by Sunday tea time, we'll be crowning our 2023 Junction 6 NKC champions. And of course, they're all running on those dreaded things, very old tyres. <laughs> well, yes, I mean, all right, so practice day today has been very wet, so we're gonna be able to save our dry tyres. Uh, remember the regulation, just remind everybody who, who's new to the series, only two sets of tyres over the course of the season. That's six events. And a lot of the, those events, we've had very little running in the wet. Today is wet for practice, so we're gonna be able to go into tomorrow and the weather forecast, I hope you're watching this in bright sunshine. The weather forecast is for it to be dry, Nick. And always at this stage of the NKC season, it's all about tyre management. How much tyre have we got left out of those two sets? So it, it really is hard to call. And with every single class, every single class championship being right down to the last, the last final of the day, it's going to be impossible to call it. Remember last year's, the, the 162 Rotax class, we didn't even see who, who, who the, the Simon Keeble won the championship. He came into the final round in like seventh, eighth position. He, we didn't even see him in contention. And that's a very similar situation we've got now. So we've got a whole day of fantastic action, non-stop racing, and we don't know who's going to win anything. But coming up now is Joe's famous pit walk and a very long chat with a very famous racer who's retiring. But that's after a couple of our youngsters have a chat first. So coming into the final round of the NKC Championship, Harry Wainwright here is leading the 177 category and a, a chance of clinching the championship. But I would imagine, Harry, a bit of a mixed emotion as you are stopping karting going into next year. Yeah, this is going to be my last race, so hopefully we can have a good result. Um, it's been a challenging year, but a good year. So we'll see what happens, but hopefully we can come away with a win. So what's behind the stop of karting? Are you, I mean, I remember interviewing you last year when you were 15 and you had to move out of the junior category because you were just growing and you're still growing. You're only 16 still and you're what, six or five? Yeah, six or five. Uh, it's because obviously I've just, I'm 16, so I've just started college yeah. um, and I want to go into motorsport and do motorsport mechanics and stuff like that. Um, so it's more just to focus on my future. Um, and I may come back to it at some point, but for now, I'm just gonna put it to the side and focus on my future. Yeah, of course, and that's very sensible of you to do that. And you've got the rest of your life to come back to motorsport. And also, you're going to be living the dream if you get a job in motor racing, aren't you? Um, I've got to bring your dad in on this. Mr. Wainwright. Come on, Mr. Wainwright. So you've got a big smile on your face. Is that because it's Harry's last race? No, not at all, no. Um, it'll be a bit of an emotional day tomorrow, actually, because yeah. we've 11 years we've been doing this for wow. now. Um, you know, two or three weekends a month at some point. Um, and to be fair, he's moving on to the next part of his life, work, college, weekends away with the lads, that type of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it probably would not, not not doing anything ever again, but, you know, other things will probably move on for him now, yeah, really. Yeah. It's very, very sensible yeah. to be thinking about that. Yeah. So going into this weekend, lads, uh, championship there, up for grabs. I mean, is that at the forefront of your mind? Uh, yeah, obviously, that's what we want to be doing. We want to win the championship, so we've just got to have some... Uh, good results, um, obviously no crashes or anything. Uh, just see what we can do to do the best we can. Dad, I didn't get your name. I've called you Mr. Wainwright. What's your name? It's Simon. Simon, you're, you're going to be watching from the sidelines and seeing karting dads and karting parents. It's more intense than his job is in the uh, actually behind the wheel, isn't it? It is, yeah. You know, you, 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 you live every lap with them, uh, you know, everything all right, you know, and every good move and uh, and, and every every incident that happens, you you know you feel it with them, really, don't you? Well, guys, well done, congratulations. I'm sure we'll see you back in something, Harry. Um, you, you never know. You're going to be working in motorsport. You never know. You might end up running a car or something. A four wheel. It's going to have to be a saloon, though. He's going to. He's only 16, and he's still he's six foot four. I know. I know. He'll be on the mechanic side next time. Yeah. Thanks, Harry. Well done, mate. Thank congratulations. You. Cheers. Thank you. Senior Rotax 162. We've got the 93 back. That's Jensen Watts. He's already done two rounds of the NKC this year, and I'm delighted to have him back. Jensen, uh, you came in and you certainly turned a few heads by winning both the rounds. I mean, 
you know, you, you must be uh, looking forward to this weekend and doing it all again. Yeah, I'm loving it. Um, thankfully, to win at Mansell in the dry, Wilton in the wet, so whatever it throws at us this weekend, feeling confident either way. Yeah, right, so you've only done two rounds. Just been chatting to your dad, he said you struggle to get an entry. What's the plans for next year? Are we going to see you go for a championship? Absolutely, yeah, we'll be here next year. Um, hopefully bring home the title. If not, we'll do our best either way. I mean, it's, you know what, a, a racing over a season, there's a, it throws a lot up, uh, doesn't it? And it's like, can you even begin to think about a championship? It's sort of, you know, can you even think about next year's championship and, and be as confident as you are? I suppose looking at your results, yes, you can is the answer. I'm answering my own questions. Yeah, um, just thinking ahead, you know, you can never really take each step by step, but think about the bigger picture going into next season. Consistent points, consistent podiums, wins, that's what makes the title. Not yeah. every win, every win. Yeah, you've, you've won in the wet, you've won in the dry. Are you uh, familiar with Clear Pigeon? Yeah, I did my novice, when I was novice racing, I was around here. Um, we went and did X30 a few years ago, so moved away, but getting back in touch with Rotax, yeah, we've done a few laps around here. All right, are you going to let us into a few secrets and what's the, the key to going quick around here? Just spray later than everyone else. Easy as. <laughs> yeah, you make that sound very easy. Uh, can I bring your dad in? What, what's your name, Dad? Carl. Carl, um, you run uh, Jensen as dad. a dad and lad, dad isn't and it? Lad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you must get a lot of satisfaction out of being able to see your son not just not just compete, but actually, you know, we'd go on and win races. Well, I do, but it's equally stressful because I mean, at Mansell's, <laughs> he was in the lead by a long way, but I was just paranoid of a chain jumping off, and I told him to stay off every curb going. I said, please don't break the cart. So it's stressful, but and we do argue. <laughs> yeah, yeah, get away. Yeah, yeah but yeah. now he's a good lad, and uh, he's driving well this year. So uh, yeah. that's off to. I couldn't do it. <laughs> and it, and it, it's a team effort, isn't it? It's uh, that's what the joy, any kind of motorsport is. But to be. Uh, I think even more so when you've got your dad or, you know, a family member who's, you know, you win together, you lose together is the saying, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, going through years together, um, we've got our own little systems in place. Mm. You know, we, we've ran with teams here and there, but we've always sort of been at just us two. He's always been my mechanic. We have our own little language, work out the setup between us, step-by-step um, -step processes, and that's how we do it. As, have you done any racing call? Many, many years ago, I played about in a Rotex, but I was, yeah. I was at the back. I was, I was yeah. firm at the back in 177s. But uh, you, I, the good bit was, I used to get a race against Mansell down at Dunkswell back in yeah. the day, so it was, yeah. that was quite cool. But uh, yeah, as far as, as far as results, don't go looking at them, please don't. The <laughs> thing is though, Carl, and, and Jensen, you'll, you'll, you'll understand this. I've had this conversation with dads before, and dads who haven't raced, and I've tried to explain to them, you haven't got a clue. You have got a clue, though, because you've raced, so you can't be too hard on him, can you? Like I said, he was far, far better than I ever yeah, was, and yeah. uh, now I leave him to the drive, and if he comes back in and he'll tell me what he thinks the cart needs, I'll go with it. I, we don't, there's no point in me telling him what to do anymore. He's, uh, yeah. he's and I know, I know your dad's been humble here, gents, uh, but you know, it, it must help having someone who has done a little bit of racing and understands the perspective from the driving seat. Yeah, totally. When we sort of started racing, we never had like a driver coach or someone to go through the data stuff like that. So it was always his influence on me to when we started. And yeah. eventually that sort of, he sort of took a step back from that bit. And, but yeah, he's always been there to help me over the years. Yeah, yeah. Okay then, final round of 2023. What's Jensen, what's going to be happy with on Sunday afternoon? Only a win. I knew he was going to say that, everybody. I knew. <laughs> and he's done it so far. So, hey, hat trick on the way. Yeah, thanks, so thanks, guys. When I started kart racing, it was in, I think it was in the 1800s. No, it wasn't. It was in the 1980s. And one of the men to beat, one of the, the, the lads to beat at that time was a chap that is standing here beside me now, Paul Ozan. Here he is still racing. He must be mad as a balloon to still be racing all these years later. But Paul, you have been at the highest levels of this sport. I mean, when I came into karting, Paul Ozan was up there and it was, Paul Ozan was like the, the man to aspire to be. Yeah. So, you know, give us a, a, a little brief synopsis of, of back then in the 80s. What, what exactly would you have been doing? Because my memory's failing me. Yeah, okay. Um, so when I, when I started, um, kind of 83, it would have been Junior, Junior Britain, um, which then went into like Junior Booster. Um, they bought a new, new category out. So yeah, I did the first British Champs 1984 mm -hmm. uh, at Risington. Um, that was in Junior Booster, finished fourth in that. And then went through the ranks into Junior Britain. 
um, Super One Series, which was like the British Champs. We did have one day events back in the day for the British yeah. Champs. Yeah. Um, come well, close many that's times. That's what people forget, isn't it? Yeah. The, the British Championship wasn't a series of rounds. Correct. It was yeah. down to one day. And, yeah. and I also remember qualifying for British Champs. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, we had, to, we had to qualify. In fact, I remember being here at a qualifier a round that I actually won, but that was an e-final. Right, right. But so yes. that's how many. That, that's how yes. many people there were. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So you, at the time that I started, you, you were the, the the quick kid, the superstar coming through from juniors and into seniors. Yeah. Um, so give me some of the names you'll have raced against people like McNish. Yeah. Exactly. Um, I think that's probably your ear, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So when I kind of started in juniors, when I was finding my my feet, basically, um, there's Alan McNish, David Coulthard, yeah. Dario Franchitti. Yes. Oliver Gavin, um, yeah, that's just to name a few. That, that you know, they were the they were the quick guys at yeah. the time, yeah. um, kind of out every week, and the ones that I had to try and get get to that level. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. I mean, I, I remember you were Super One champion. Remind me of the year. Um, yeah, kind of in the nineties, and my last time was twenty twenty. And, and that was when the Super One championship was the British championship. The Super One championship was over several rounds. If I'm yeah. right, and, and everybody's perception was that the Super One champion was the British champion, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. I mean, back back then, yeah. I mean, we did have the kind of standalone championships, yeah. Um, but then the, the series as well, and that's kind of what got me into car racing because the year would have been kind of late. Let me think now, 1991, wow. when I was doing 100 Super A then, and yeah. um, so I won the Formula Renault scholarship, Formula Renault were, were actually back in uh, the Super 1 series. Um, I actually actually won the last round at Risington, um, which just so happened was the only meeting that they actually came to. So there was Jason Plato was was there doing yes. demonstrating in the in the Formula Renault and so on. Um, <clears throat> and three of us got selected to go through, um, which was a training course in France at the Winfield course at Magny Corps. Yeah. And there was me, there was a guy called Daniel Little, whose dad was Graham Little, which was a successful world championship carter in the 60s, 70s, and a certain Christian Horner. Really? Was it really? Um, so I kind of went through and won that scholarship. So I beat yeah. them two guys to, yeah. to get into Formula Renault. Um, did Formula Renault kind of 92, 93, 94. Yeah. Um, was great, but the budget was just astronomical. And um, obviously, Carton was was where it kind of started for me and we come back into it um 90 kind of 96 we got the dealership for the gold cart which obviously we still run today yes um and and yeah i kind of was involved full time till about 2002 yeah i won the o plate the abkc o plate actually here at clay pigeon mm -hmm. and that's when i kind of knocked it on the head for a bit Lots before, before my midlife crisis. Yeah. <laughs> before your midlife crisis, you know what? It's a. I, I've always thought of our sport, of motorsport, is quite a cruel sport because there you go. You know, Formula Renault scholarship. You're in Formula Renault, and the thing that stifles you going forward is not talent yeah. or ability, but it's funding. Yeah. And that's the problem with with. Well, I say a problem. It's always been there. It's been there since the very advent of of motorsport. Do you feel kind of any kind of? Um, I don't know any kind of bad feeling do you feel like sort of you were cheated you know you could have been a contender I, to be honest there's a lot of there's a lot of great drivers out yes. there um you know i was obviously at the top top in carton at one stage but there was a lot of others i was racing against you know what i mean like bobby game he was another yes, quality yeah. driver dean panrocker and um, this is like the top in the you know in the kind of in in the kind of late 90s you yeah. know what i mean and there was a lot michael spencer um, there's a lot of great, great drivers, you know what I mean? Yeah, and you know, they had backing and so on with teams and so on. Um, but they're all capable, quality drivers, you know what I mean? Um, you know, and they haven't unfortunately gone on either. And, it, and the thing which would hold anyone back is just that budget, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think there's a lot of great, great drivers out there um, which potentially could be in Formula One now. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Just yeah. never had. Yeah. you know that budget to do it unfortunately it, it's yeah. a long list isn't it uh, paul what's um what are the changes if if any i mean you know fundamentally that car chassis that we're in front of now yeah. looks 
aesthetically exactly as they did in the 80s. Yes, you've got these pretty fairings and side pods and that now, but for, you know, what changes have you seen in the sport? To be honest, Lowe's, back, back in the day, there wasn't the adjustments. You literally bolted your tyres on, did your tyre pressures, and, and off you went. Um, now, they've just... It's literally, now, it's like Formula 1. It's like a little racing car, isn't it? It really is. You've got different, different seats, various axles, um, different rims, and that all makes a difference to your handling, you know, to your performance that you got on track. Back in the day, we didn't have that. We just had a set of rims with your slicks on and um, that's all you could do really. And, and I suppose that is why you get people starting in the sport that will come to the likes of Polos and Racing because they're gleaning that experience of all of that that you've just said. Yeah, exactly. I mean, as I said, it has got, Carton has got, it hasn't got easier over the years, yes. but you know, kind of in the eighties, it literally just turned, turned up with your car, sat in it and drove it. And you just drove it round and round and round. And if you were on the pace, you're on the pace. If you weren't, you weren't. Um, but now, obviously, there's a lot, lot more to it. Yeah. And obviously, over the years and being back in the sport and involved with it again, um, learning all the, you know, kind of everything, what everything does with the, with the seats, the axles, the pressures, where everything needs to be. Yeah. Um, and obviously, with my previous experience, I've got yeah. that I can pass on to, yeah. to help to help drivers. Yeah, it's a massive shortcut. So, all right, you're retiring going forward as a driver. However, you're still going to have a presence very much in this paddock. And I mean, you know, you're, you're open to customers coming forward and competing with you in the NKC and, and other series. Yeah, correct. Um, you know, I've really enjoyed like being back in the sport, running the team again. Uh, having Jay with the team has been great. It's been his first year. Yeah. Um, he's gone from kind of kind of big time in at the deep end to actually now, you know, in, in the top 10. Yeah. So it's so it's good, and you know, hopefully carrying on forward with with Jay for next year, yeah. and yeah, look, looking to get a few more drivers within the team. Um, you know, on the gold car, the gold's always been a great car. Mm -hmm. We've just always been swamped by Tony Carts and their products. Um, yeah. But since 1996, when we've been on the car, I've never felt disadvantaged against against you know the other brands yeah. if i did we wouldn't have persevered with it but yes. for you know yeah. 96 to now it's a long time 27 yeah. years of of being with this product yeah um it's a strong chassis it's a good chassis um and you know we just hope other people will will realize that well there was your sales pitch paul plenty of owning space with paul Azan racing yeah. for nkc next year uh, come and speak to him um I want to leave you with this question. All right, you're not going to do a Frank Sinatra on us, are you? But what what could possibly tempt you back behind the wheel? Probably, probably gearbox. Probably right. one, one two five. Right. Uh, I did one two five in the late nineties. So at the time I was doing Formula A, which was to me probably the best category of racing I'd, I'd ever done. But then. We'd, I was helping a driver that year and he went on to win the British Championships in the 125 National category. I jumped in his car, he let me in his car and my first event was at Three Sisters and it was the biggest smile I've ever had <laughs> really? driving anything. Yeah, yeah. Really. So it was almost yeah. 100 mile an hour at the end of Three Sisters, you know, Wigan Straight. And for me, that was the biggest buzz I'd ever had in a car. Wow. And that's something that would tempt me back, yeah. 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 I'm going to get your missus, who's behind Paul with the camera, to remind him just how old he is. He wants to move from Rotax Max into something that's even quicker. Oh, there she is. Can you remind him how old he is, please, for his own sake, really? Paul, it's <laughs> been a pleasure. It was, I was delighted to see you in this paddock when we yeah. first got involved, and I'll be delighted to see you continue in this paddock. And I've got an inkling that I haven't seen the last of Paul Ozan behind the wheel. I look forward to seeing you in a KZ. Okay. Great stuff. Have a great yeah. weekend as well. Cheers, mate. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Perhaps one of the most exciting championships in this year's NKC has been Minimax. It's been the smallest of grids, but it's not small when it comes to drama and intrigue and intensity. And Sonny Morgan here. Sonny, you've just come off the track. It's very wet here. All right, this is the day before the race meeting. Uh, Sonny, the, the, uh, the weather forecast isn't quite as, ex as we've got now, but um, you're covered in mud and wetness. And what's the track like at the moment? Well, the tracks, well, it's absolutely drenched at the yeah. moment, but 
the problem with clay, it seems to dry up, then it goes wet, then it goes back to dry again. So it's difficult to find setup, the right setups, because we're going from one to another, really, with clay. And, and how difficult will that be then? So you, you're practicing on a track that's going to be completely different if the weather forecast is, is to be believed. Yeah, well, it's luck of the draw, really, trying to find the right setup. So, like, you know, wet or dry because the track's dried up, it's gone wet again. Yeah. It's been one or another every single session. So yeah. Yeah. it's been tough. Now then, last round of the championship. Yeah. In contention, you're in second. It's all to play for still. Being in second, is that is that less pressure on you, do you think? Well, I mean, it's, I don't think there's much pressure on me. I've just got to come here and do what I do every weekend. Yes. But for Colton, I mean, he's, the pressure's all on him now, really. But I've just got to do what I usually do and see what happens at the end of it. And is that is that your approach, Sonny? You're going to go into each heat and just think about the moment, not think about the championship? Well... I think about the championship, but uh, at this point now it's the final and I'm behind, so I've just got to try and win as much as I can and bring as much points home and see what happens. All right, have you, um, and we always talk about next season at the final round of any championship, though it doesn't matter what you're driving. Um, so 2024, it's the last season of Minimax here in the NKC, but also you're getting older. Are you moving? Will I see you in juniors next year? I'll be juniors next year, Excellent, yeah. Right. 100%. Um, well, I think I might be the biggest Minimax driver out there. So. Yeah, I think you are. And we're struggling with weight. We've got the sticker kit stripped off the car, right. down to bare minimum, everything. Right, so. right. And that's just to get you down to weight. Yeah. I, I've, I've always wanted to ask somebody this. You've brought it up, so I'm going to ask you. Do you know what a sticker kit weighs? Well, we think it's about a kilo. Wow, really? A kilo. Right. So by t what the sticker kit, what we're talking about here is you'll see the different colours of the carts, and that's actually stickers that uh, is applied to the front and the sides of the carts. And that's what Sonny's had taken off his cart. So we'll see you in pure white, is it, or black? Um, well, it's, it's a white bumper and everything else is white. No, right. sorry, black bumper, everything else white. Black bumper, white side pods, that's what you've got to look out for. Best of luck, Sonny. Yep, it's all to play for. Thanks, man. Thank you.